that's a tough question to follow. Is everything will go there? Yeah. Just, okay. just. You see what it's like when you let him out of his kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Katie Farthing Yeah, I spent the last two weeks with Jeevananda. So. This is what's happening. Yeah, yeah. this is what happens when you spend <laughs> every day and night with Jeevananda. I told you that yesterday. Keep in here. The nature of the devotee is that wherever he goes, people have a tendency to fall in love with him. People love the devotee. Uh, and why? What's the secret to this mystical? Hmm. It's because the devotee is not looking for love. He's looking to give love. He's not expecting love. Why? Why, is the devotee, why should the devotee expect love? You turn in the source of love. So you have it. Yeah, you already have it. <clears throat> so, the devotee never feels unloved. But that's a, a foreign feeling to the devotee. Okay. Now, to the degree that you've made an advancement, if you've advanced a little bit, sometimes you may feel a little unloved, but that's being fixed as you gradually climb this uh, path to uh, full devotional service, loving devotional service. We start to realize that we have always been loved overloved by the Supreme Lover. The Supreme Lover is Krishna. You see. Uh, he can love like nobody else. Krishna can love like all living entities put together times an unlimited number. Times an infinity plus another infinity. You see. So, uh, we've enjoyed that love for eternity until we decided to come to this material world and try to find it on our own and make ourselves the center, you see. So then we, uh, we kind of, uh, what's the word, um, uh, sabotaged our own personal uh, gratification, our own gratification with, with Krishna. We said to Krishna, uh, you know, you're so wonderful. Everyone seems to be good gravitating towards you. And I can see that. You know, you're, so, you're so wonderful. But why don't they gravitate towards more? I think I can be as good as you, Krishna. Maybe. Truth be known, better. So, I think I will compete with you. Krishna doesn't say, you know, he doesn't draw his sword and say, well, yeah, I'll offer your hand. Krishna says, really? Oh, okay. How would you like to be in charge of a whole world? A whole solar system. If you create it, engineer it, and you're thinking, oh, me? Oh, oh, yeah, I'll do that. So if a living entity <clears throat> gently and gracefully comes into the material world, they're not thrown out, you see. Gently, gracefully, you come into the material world as Lord Brahma. And you're the, you are the Lord of that world. Of course, Krishna is the Supreme Lord. But you get to lord it over in material nature. You get to get a taste of what it's like to be the center. And so, now it's all about me putting myself in the center. And from that point on, the living entity uh, has great difficulty. And it just keeps to get worse and worse on and on as we try to put myself in the center. And the reason is, is because I'm surrounded by all these other living entities. And they have the same affliction that I have. They, all of us, have left Krishna for the same reason. To be in the center. Now, there's only one center. So therefore there's competition. And since there's competition, there is... Uh, meeting of egos. There's lines drawn in the sand. There's wars. Genocide. You see? All types of corruption. Because I want to be in the center and you want to be in the center and 
one of us has to go. So this is the nature of the material world. You see? Uh, we have a tendency to lord it over the material nature. Um, and to think that <clears throat> we are extremely special. Mm. Hey, we need to hire Krishna. So mm. nice to see you. We start to want to lord it over the material nature, and you want to lord it over the material nature. So therefore, we have to we have to have it all. Somehow or other, I have to uh, by hook or by crook, as they say, gain some advantage. If I don't, you'll gain the advantage. I don't get what I want, which is to be in the center. And I use this all the time. I know you've heard me use it before, but <clears throat> just to refresh our memories, because sometimes people think, I don't want to be in the center. Me, little old me? No, that's all these other people. You know? But if we took a nice, beautiful, this is a beautiful group picture. If I, if I had a, a nice camera and I took a group photo, you know, and then we pass the photo around, who's the first person you're going to look for? <laughs> Even if you're not in the center, you're going to try and move yourself to the center. First for the first, no, number one, you know, was I blinking? Oh, darn. That camera has 10 pounds. <laughs> this camera's in 40 pounds. Wow. So, but I don't look to see if, if Bakta Aaron was blinking. Maybe after I see how, how, how unpleasing I look, I'll, I'll try to find fault with Sean or Aaron or something. You see. So this is kind of like our nature. It, it, it takes a, a big person to admit it. That's right, I'm trying to put myself in the center. You know. Uh, but the devotee admits, yes, I am, but I'm trying to get over it. You, know, you hear people say, uh, <clears throat> I'm a recovering alcoholic. Well, you, you, how long has it been since you've had a drink? Oh, 35 years. Really? <laughs> But I still consider myself a recovering alcoholic. You see, so we are uh, recovering from this uh, uh, pain that we've inflicted on ourselves. We've come into a world of people who are all trying to be number uno, you know? and I'm, I'm willing to make you think that you're number one in my life, provided that I get something for that. If I, if I think you're you're very pretty, and I think that maybe you'll let me enjoy you, then I'll make you feel like a, a princess or a queen or whatever, you see. I'll tell you what, it, what I need to tell you to gain access to, to your body, to enjoy your resources. And that lasts very nicely until I find someone else that I think maybe I can enjoy better. Therefore, there's so much, uh, what is the divorce rates? 53% now in America. <clears throat> now, some people, when they hear that, they say, wow, this isn't counting the number of people who mate and break up and repeat that again and again and again. And like we have since we started uh, to become active, you see. We've been doing this repeatedly. So we're not counting those numbers. If we added that number into the divorce rate, the number would be staggering. So you know, my point is, we're not doing it the right way. There's something wrong. I'm trying to exploit you. You're trying to exploit me. And we'll let each other exploit to the point that I have some gain, and I have some gratification. And therefore, it's not working. And so. Because I didn't get from you what I wanted from you. Now I'm feeling unloved. Because you were just like the rest of them. They said they love me, and now they don't love me. I feel so unloved. Isn't that sad? This is the state of most of the world. So not just the Western world. Maybe not so much in Asia, but you know, in this book, in our world. You've had some experience, isn't it true? Psychologists, you know, mm -hmm. 
psychological therapy. Most, most people will say, you know, my biggest com complaint is I just can't find true love, real, lasting love. And I say, well, you know, it's like if you're looking, if you're going to Alaska to dig for gold, and you're looking for gold, but you have no idea what color gold is or what it looks like, you're probably not going to find it. And if you do, you're not going to know when you find it. So, so many people are looking for love. They're motivated to love and to be loved. But they really don't understand it. love. There's so little understanding. We have a perverted material uh, conception of love. See. So the devotee, uh, as he comes in contact with Krishna by surrendering, even though we can say our surrender is not mature, it's not perfect, it may be a little bit. You see. So as we surrender a little bit to Krishna, we taste it like a, a, a drop of this nectar of his love, supreme love, the, the real thing, not the imitation, not the brand X, you know, the real McCoy. You get a taste of that, it, it transforms you, you see. Uh, the devotee's nature, when he tastes a, a tiny drop of Krishna's love, his, his love for Krishna grows magnificently. You see, Krishna gives a little drop, your love grows and you start to actually learn what love really is. You experience it from the supreme lover, Krishna. You start this love affair with him. So you get carried away in loving. And you realize, I am so loved. Krishna has loved me, embraced me for eternity. Until I left. But even when I left him to come to this material world to take his position, if I can defeat all the rest of you and become the supreme ruler, his love didn't stop. It's not like he said, all right, well, I'm going to hate you until you come back. You see? Krishna is so kind and sweet that he doesn't want you to go. I mean, he doesn't want you to go. He's thinking, oh, I have to let you go. I, I can't. It's not real love if I show you, well, look, there's nothing but me. There's no lovable object except for me. I'm the supreme lovable object. You have to have a choice. In love, you have a choice. To feel loved, you have to be chosen. So Krishna gives us this. It, it's said that we are wired uh, with a default or a defective. Krishna gives us the ability to make the wrong decision. Because we have to have free will. Otherwise, we're prisoner. And Krishna is not cheap with love. With him, love has got to be the real thing. You see, he's the supreme lover. He knows the real me. So therefore, you have to have the ability and the right to make your choice and also to reject. <coughs> So that if you accept him, then you feel, oh, you've chosen me. There's no other choice. But he doesn't want you to think like that. I have to choose you when there's no other choice. You have to think, well, I think I'll go somewhere else and find love. Krishna knows, well, you've really got to be back here. You know? But you don't know. So off we go, and we were on this trek to board it over the, the nature, material nature, <clears throat> and to compete with one another to, to gain the, the, the upper position. You see, so that when the living entity has enough of this, when they've suffered enough, uh, sometimes with suffering, oftentimes with suffering, we start to awaken our consciousness. You know, if I touch the stove one time, if I'm very intelligent, I realize, well, wow, that's really hot, that's burnt, that burnt, I shouldn't do that. I don't know, maybe if I try it this way, no, that, that burns too, okay. But how about if I, so an intelligent person, when he gets his hand closed, or actually you could tell him, don't touch that, it's hot. Oh, okay. But then sometimes we have to touch it, touch it more than once, 
more than 10 times before we say, you know what, I think that stove's hot. <laughs> me think, me not do that again. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Finally, we get the picture. So, the mature world is like that in it. It has a tendency to kick you because this is not, this is a broken place. Things don't work here in the mature world. There are traffic jams. Uh, there's uh, uh, cold spells, heat spells, dry spells, rainy spells. And right now in the Midwest, unless it's over, they're, they're all iced in and frozen. You see, <clears throat> there's airline delays. There's so many things, so many wars. People are cheating. Governments are cheating. Everyone is stealing from this one and that one. It's a broken world. Things don't work here. You see. So uh, we have a tendency to be uh, in anxiety. So, because uh, now, and here's a good point that I'd like to make. If that is the nature of the world, does anybody disagree that that's the nature of the world? It's broken. It doesn't work. There is no utopia. Do you know where that word comes from, utopia? Nowhere in Latin. Yeah. In Latin, it, means, it comes from the Latin word utopus, which means nowhere. In other words, there is no such place. It's fictitious. It's fantasy land. They, 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 uh, they would say, someone would say, well, life should be this way, so, uh, utopus. In other words, you're looking for, you know, go to Walt Disney, you'll be there. So there is no uh, utopia in this material world. It doesn't work. It's broken. So if that's true, and if it's always been that way, and it was that way for our uh, all of our descendants from the beginning of time, uh -huh. and if we are part of this material world, if we are these bodies, and if we are these material elements, then why can't we accept that it's just broken and that's the way it is. It wouldn't bother us. Unless we've had a taste of an unbroken world. We've had, we've seen perfection, you see. Therefore, we search for it. We've tasted pure, pure love. And therefore, we seek it. If you had never tasted sugar, picture this, if you've never tasted sugar ever, or anything sweet, no, no honey, no anything like that, would you be seeking it? You don't know what it is. You wouldn't taste something and say, well, this would be better if it had some sugar in it. You've never tasted it. It's missing. So the very fact that you want it to work and the very fact that you want real love means you have observed it. Think about that. This isn't new. This isn't a new concept, you see. You are not part of this world. You are not this body. You have nothing to do here. You're like if you take water and you pour oil in water, it just immediately flows to the top. And that's our nature. We don't mix with this material world. We're not happy here. And we're not going to get happy here. It's not going to work for us. The intelligent person says, you know, you're right. It's not going to work. I'm not a part of this world. I want more. I want more because I'm entitled to more. I've had more. You see, I've tasted it. And I want it back. If you hadn't experienced it, you wouldn't be seeking it. It's not possible. So, yes. <clears throat> well, if we're seeking after it, <clears throat> and we're all here right now, which I think we can agree on, then why aren't we, aren't we trying to improve on what is already here? What's that? What's your question? If things are permanently screwed up here on Earth, then why are we trying to improve them? Because we have faith. <laughs> okay. Then we why have, not look, we have faith up? in the material elements. Okay. But you just said that it's unreliable. Yeah, but we keep thinking that if we do it again, uh, if I continue with the same activity, it's like we were talking before, I'll, I'll get a different result. 
Well, it seems you're a little confused because you're saying that we're not of this world yet. We're of this world, we're not of this world, we're of this world. So we're not of this world. Okay. So we're demanding something from the world that it can't deliver, which is perfection. We want things to work. Well, I, don't, well, I, want, I, want, I want real love. I don't want heartache. Well, it's not talking about love necessarily. I don't, okay, well, let me, let me make a point. I don't want old age. I don't want disease. Yeah. I don't want death. Think of it. If death is, the, the death rate of this planet has always been what? Perfect ratio. 100%. 100%. Everything that's ever taken birth, every creature that's ever come into this material world has died. All of my descendants. That's, if I am this body, and if I am part of this world, then it's my nature to. Right. Then why does it bother me? I don't know why it would bother you. It, something is going to happen, so why not accept it? But you're getting out of the way. We don't do that. I do. We don't want that. I don't want to die. Do you? I don't feel I'm pretty ambivalent about that. But that's just me. Yeah. Many people think that until the... Well, I've had my head split open or been near death many times, so I'm yeah. still pretty ambivalent. You may be different. Typically, though, people don't want that. No. We don't want old age. No. Well, what? Nobody wants old age. I'm there and I'm telling you, I don't want it. If you can avoid it, stay young. Right, because with it comes so many things. I don't want a duration. <clears throat> when duration? I, when, when I, uh, yeah, when I meet someone and I fall in love with them, I want to freeze that moment and have it be forever. But it doesn't, it doesn't happen. It, I want these things. I keep making demands on the material world that it cannot deliver. It never has delivered. But it's be, my nature. Uh, it's like we talk about entitlements. Every time we get close to an election, there's people talking about entitlements. That word floats around, you know, entitlements. Uh, you, as a, a living entity, as a spirit soul, have some entitlements. God-given entitlements that are part of your nature. You're entitled to eternal, eternality. You always have existed. You always will exist. There's never been a time when you did not exist. There will not be a time when you'll cease to be. So you're entitled to eternality. Okay? You're entitled to knowledge. You're full of knowledge. So going back to earlier, um, the, you know, something here in my question. Um, <coughs> my, my, we have faith, right? In oh, yeah. You have right. faith. Right. right. So we try to improve the world as it is. You know, we're, we're born, we'll die, of course, that's obvious. So, what's the problem with being part of human progress? We're going to die. So, why we contribute whatever we can while okay, we're here? Okay, human progress. Uh, have you seen any? Uh, how'd you get to your last gig? Huh? How'd you get to your last gig? And where, where were you re, re, pre, before Tucson? Uh, I was in El Paso. How'd you, how'd you walk here? I didn't walk, I took a van. Okay, so, so, <coughs> so who invented the van? Oh, I think it came from. <laughs> so, but now, that's material advancement. That's material progress. Right. There is a requirement. The reason why we have it is because there's a requirement for it. It's not uh, an advancement in, in uh, human society. At one time, I had no need to cover great distance. Yeah, you see, I had a nice, I'm saying uh, many, many generations ago, I had a nice farm. And once in a while, I might have to go a couple of miles away from my home. Yeah, most <coughs> people didn't. Most yeah, because people of that van. Tight, small communities. And yeah, because of that van, you see more people and probably help more people than you probably could have yeah. a few generations ago. So there's progress for you. <coughs> but there's a need for it. And there's progress in it. You can use anything in Christian service. I can't use a car and a horse very well. I get that El Paso to from El Paso to here. You can use a car in Christian service. Yeah. And that's what he does. Yeah, when you use any, something in Krishna service, it becomes Krishnaized. It becomes... It's true. Okay. 
you know, I can I can use an object for. Um, are you leaving? No. I'll slip every one of you out. Get out. No. <laughs> okay, you take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, well, thank you. Must have been Yeah. Um, there's a requirement for me to have, or for us to have, transportation now. Uh, there's a demand placed on us for it. Families used to stay together. Now they go away to college, then they get careers, and parents are located here, and their children are located halfway across the country. So now I need this. Right. So that's not an advancement. The ultimate result is my family split. Only well, spatially. If somebody, if somebody tells you, but that's good, because now you have a way to go see them, you may say, hold everything. You're not pulling the wool over my eyes. Come on. A better world would be that we're all together. Instead of large and personal cities where people don't know who's next door to them. It used to be smaller villages where everybody knew everybody and looked out for everybody. And even in this Western world, in, in America, in the earlier days, when someone needed a, a, a new barn, they would have what's called a barn raising, where the neighbors would get together and pool resources. So have we made advancement from that? Absolutely. <laughs> I just demonstrated it to you. And you that you and you agreed to it, but I know that things became pushed. No, no, I'm saying I, I, I'm no, I'm, I'm disagreeing. I'm disagreeing that we made advancement. Okay. I, I don't think it's good that uh, we can live next that, door to people and not know, or across the street and not know these. You see, we're we're in a, we're in a big city, and how many people do we know? Well, you just said that in my example of you using your van to get from El Paso. Yeah. To here. That it becomes Krishna, Krishnatized? Krishnaized. Krishnaized. Okay, sorry. Krishnaized, in that you use it for the purpose of being a devotee of Krishna, right? Just to serve him. Just to serve him. The fan solely exists to serve him. If it was up to me, right. I'd find a nice, comfortable place. And settle down, right? And sit down and just, you know, but just, my, my bones are sore. Uh, yeah. You know, I get sick and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just old. 65. I'm on, I'm on Medicare. I don't use it very often. But you see what I mean? Yeah. So I'd rather, if it was all about me, mm -hmm. I'd rather have a nice, comfortable place and sit down. I Take agree. it easy. I mean, it's, it's After all, know. I've worked hard all my life. I deserve it. <laughs> right. And we all so have commitments. So that's you're no different from anyone else in that respect. But that's what Krishna wants me to do. My guru wants me to spread this movement. And it gives me great pleasure to give him pleasure. And it gives me absolutely no pleasure when I'm trying to please myself. Yeah. It gives me temporary uh, fleeting pleasure. Yeah, fleeting. Think I think I'm. It. But then I have to try try harder. I need a. Uh, I notice whenever I come back to America, <laughs> wherever I go, the televisions keep getting bigger, and <laughs> bigger, and bigger. I, I you know. I just went to visit some some people. And I, I walked in their house and <laughs> that's a television? We used to have, you know, 20, remember a 25 inch TV was huge. And then they went to 32. Can you imagine 32? Now they're like, you know, and they're flat, they're high definition. They're 3D. They actually have 3D where you can put on, like at the movies, you can put on, you know, so, yeah. Well, just, you know, kind of in the topic of the so-called uh, material advancement, I had a conversation similar with a friend of mine who we were talking about the pros and cons of what appear to be material advancement or improvement. And uh, his response was, was kind of cool. He's just... <laughs> He said, yeah, he said, materially we're advancing, he says, but we're just improving a downward trend. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Right. Well, I think yes. that your point was about the state of perfection being something that's outside of what this world can deliver. Yeah. And the example being progress never really ends, even if you define where we are today as, as progress, which is debatable. But if one were to, 
when in human history or the history of this, this planet, this universe, has there ever been an end to any kind of progression? Instead, this is always a state where there's balance and imbalance and trying to find a place of harmony. And so you can look into the natural environment, you can look to human history, etc., but never can you find a state of, of perfection. And I believe that's more what you were saying, well, is that that's even, outside. Or even satisfaction. Right, right. Right, perfection it, inside or externally. You know, that's the, the biggest austerity for the living entity, to feel satisfaction. Where we get it, it's fleeting, like you said, it's fleeting. Mm -hmm. We get it and it's just, I'm satisfied because I've got a, uh, an iPhone, an yeah. iPhone 15. <laughs> S. <laughs> yeah, a 15 S. That's right. And none of you guys have it. I had the first one on my block. I think that's what all spiritual teachers have always shown, is that anything external is always going to deliver a fleeting internal satisfaction, but exactly. it's a spiritual practice that delivers the eternal. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, people may say, well, we have, uh, just think, you know, uh, talking about the television, we, we have bigger TVs. We have more opportunity to enjoy. Are people really happier? Does it seem like a real happy world? I mean, I get around a lot, and I don't see, I see people that are, they, when I meet them, they say, oh, I say, how are you? Oh, I'm really well. I'm great. <laughs> Hey, can you get a chance? Can, can you talk? So it's like, you know, yeah, I'm doing really well. He said, oh, man, I'll tell you. I need your advice, you know. I don't have anybody that's uh, very rarely, you know. The devotees, maybe. But to say, hey, everything is wonderful. The devotee will say, you'll say, how are you today? I'm engaged in Krishna service. How can I be? What can I say? The devotee has, typically the devotee has this feeling I don't really need anything. I don't really want it. I don't have any desires that aren't being fulfilled. How can I serve you? What can I do for you? You know. But the devotee never walks around thinking, oh boy, I just, oh, if I had this, or if I had that, you see. You see, the devotee is satisfied because we're well situated. Once in a while we may have a, a fleeting moment where we think, oh, you know, I. Uh, I think I need this. And we may analyze it and realize, well, it's not going to really help me in my devotional service. I don't think I need that. But sometimes we really need something uh, to help us in our service. It's just like, you know, uh, I had this old van that, uh, that was wearing out. I had almost 170,000 miles an hour. What was it? That old van? The one in San Antonio? Oh. It's like 660,000. I don't know about how many. Something like that. It's I think it's about 190 now. Yeah. So it was wearing out, and I thought it still works well, but I can't depend it. Uh, you know, going 80 miles an hour across the West Texas desert, and, you know, you get out in the middle of nowhere. I just feel uncomfortable that it might break at the worst possible place. So my dear Lord Krishna, if, if it's your will, I could sure use a different one, you know, something better. I mean, it, it, unless you want me to stop this crazy running around all over the country. Um, but anyway, let me know what you want. But, you know, if you want me to continue this, it'd be nice to have something a little better. And before I know it, Krishna says, all right, here, I want you to have this. And give me one that's much newer. Not brand new, but much newer. Wherever I went after that, after having that prayer with Krishna, um, People were offering donations that were bigger than ever, twice as big. And I'm thinking, where does all this money come from? You know, Krishna was sending this and sending that. And next thing I know, I, I had this, this other vehicle. So, you know, um, um, then I could give the other one away. You know, give it to the San Antonio Temple. And they're not driving like I drive, but it works well for them around town. So, um, so the devotee has a need only to serve Krishna, to support my service. Other than that, I don't have any needs. Uh -oh. yeah. So I don't think that we're making any progress in, uh, in happiness in this material world, or definitely not satisfaction. I don't really see it. I see people who can wear that mask. They can go down. It's just like when they go out of the house. to me. 
Well, it just seems really defeatist to me to be blind to human progress. Yeah. Oh, I even see it. It's just intervals of it. No, no, I it's see it. Even the happiness. But what is it getting you? What is what getting me? This human progress. Novelty. I mean, I'm always curious. So discovering new things is always interesting to me. Uh, I don't read the news that much, but of the news I do read, I only read the science, the technology, and the health. So I'm seeing new, new things health. every week. What are the advancements in health? We can enjoy our lives for longer. You know, if we enjoy our lives, we can with that. Longer. We can live longer. Yes. We so can enjoy our lives longer. Okay. There are many people that are alive. So and they may be, instead of passing at 75, now they're 82. Right. They're not enjoying their life, though. Some people are. I can show you one. If I'm trying to sell you my pills, I'll show you this 80-year-old guy, and he's fit, and, you know, he can do chin-ups and everything. And then our pills will make you like that. But behind him is a million his age that are not doing that well. It, it's really, uh, we've extended the life uh, expectancy. We haven't extended any happiness. Any, any that's true your point. point, though. Right. And you're stating it as an absolute, but that's really just your what, point. One man's opinion. Okay. Well, it's like Eric Kurzweil's The Age of Spiritual Machines. I'm sure you've read the book. You know, he is a man that pops 50 pills a day to try and morph his body into nanotechnology so it can be immortal and increase the singularity of 2040. I mean, every day, Nick, he's in distress because he wants to live, he wants to be immortal. And, you know, Eric Kurzweil is his name. It's an interesting book, The Age of Spiritual Machines, when eventually machines will have their own intelligence and all this stuff. But I, I think what's interesting is that, and what's being suggested here, is that any material progression is still a surrogation for what we're hankering for eternally. And, well, what are we hankering for eternally? Well, I think, I think it's very clear there's a knowledge that we're without, and that's the ultimate suffering. And we're all getting 50 billion apps so that we can enjoy better and increase our senses, right. but we're really anchoring for something more pleasurable. What, what the apps are doing is taking your mind off what you're missing. Mm -hmm. you're, you, practically everybody in this material world, uh, at one time or another, or maybe if we really are honest with ourselves for an extended, long period of time, is feeling unloved. Technology isn't making love work any better. People are still not feeling satisfied, well, fulfilled. Think, again, you're making a bastardization. Well, I think I mean, if a person in this lifetime, they show me, really the, wait, show me, show me the statistics that, happy. that say that I'm wrong. I mean, show me the statistics that show that you're right. That's true. It's like, look at how many people are on antidepressants today. That's statistically verifiable. What's, what is the highest pre prescribed uh, medicine? Uh, in this country? Yeah. Uh, probably heart medication. Antidepressants. Antidepressants. Diabetic medication. By far. I had the statistics. But th now this was 10 years ago. I had statistics that were by far antidepressants mm -hmm. were, uh, and, uh, and it predicted right. that by right. now, 35% of the population. It's more than that now. Yeah. And now I'm children are being diagnosed and treated medically. Yeah. It's mature. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. So I'm but sorry. I don't see progress. Sorry. I'm not that. sold on it. I don't. Well, we'll just have to respectfully disagree. Yeah. So this is not going anywhere for that, I think. But I mean, we have a divorce rate that's climbing and climbing. We have uh, more and more people being depressed. Suicide is increasing. Mm -hmm. um, Bankruptcy is at an all-time high. Uh, I mean, I can go on. I, mean, I don't. I don't see how this is a really great progress. That we're Bankruptcy yeah, is. Yeah, I've got. Uh, you know, I don't have a phone. You know. Yeah, I've got this this uh, gizmo. You know, guess what I have? I have a thing that, um, that I've never had before. I can push a button and open my doors on my car. Isn't that great? Yeah. And, and while I'm thinking about that, and while I'm enjoying that, I, I, it's allowing me to forget that I'm suffering, that I really want to have a, a complete feeling of love. I want to have a pure, eternal, loving exchange. Because that's what I'm all about as a living entity. 
I'm not about playing with phones or being wowed by big TVs. I'm not about that. I'm about the emptiness that I feel. Maybe I'm just speaking for myself. But according to Shastra, we are creatures of love. Our purpose is to exchange love. That third entitlement that I didn't get to is eternal bliss. You're entitled to be blissful. Sat chit ananda. Sat, you're entitled to be eternal. Chit, you're entitled to full knowledge. And ananda, you're entitled to be always blissful. If you're not, it's your fault. You're going away from the source of ananda, of bliss. We can have it. We're entitled to it. It's our nature. But because we're here, tangled up in all the cute doodads that we can tinker with, the doodads aren't really delivering any, any uh, uh, enjoyment. Temporary. If we're eternal and then full of bliss, we don't need the knowledge then really at that point, right? Or, or do we? I mean, if you... It's our nature to be full of knowledge. It gives us, it gives the living entity uh, an uncomfortable feeling when he feels that he doesn't understand. Oh, so if we don't have the knowledge, so the, the bliss would, you have to have the knowledge they all to come have together. the bliss. They all come together. Eternal, blissful, full of knowledge. That's, that's us. That's what we are. You see. And we feel distressed. I'm an eternal living entity, and I'm in a body that I see is dying. It's, a, it's aging. That gives me distress because it's against my nature. I'm eternal. But yet I'm dying. You see what I mean? I'm eternal, and I feel a distress because I think I'm this body, and it's going to die. You see, there, there are things I don't know. I'm scurrying to try to learn to find knowledge and to gain this because there are so many things I, I don't understand. Knowledge, uh, all, all knowledge, doesn't necessarily mean I know how to invent better and better computers. All knowledge means I have an understanding of who I am and, and what makes the, what makes relationships work, supreme relationships. You see, things that endure long before there were computers or when computers go away, which they will someday. You see. And Ananda, uh, I'm entitled to be eternally blissful and happy. That's my nature as a living entity. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be looking for it. You see, it would be perfectly normal for me to suffer. But yet we don't like to suffer. You see? Like I said, we've tasted sugar, so therefore we seek it sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> All right, how are we doing on time? Well, it's 8 o'clock. Should we wrap it up? You're lost. No, I'm not sure. You take a boat. Whatever you like. Yeah. We have, we're all ready to roll here. Yeah. What do you, what do you guys want to do? Keep talking? Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of time. <laughs> actually, actually, you can combine both if you want. <laughs>